Hello everybody, it's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. In this video, we have an update on Rachel Kirk Connell and Matt James. Rachel claps back at Fan who says, oh, I feel like she looks sad. And Rachel's like, I'm actually quite happy, thanks. I'm on a beach, I'm young, I'm doing well, I'm okay. She didn't say those last parts, but it's like she's like, okay, things are going just fine. We're going to discuss this story. Matt James spotted out. A lot of people have been speculating about their relationship. Maybe it has ended, maybe it hasn't. Either way, we can just be happy for them regardless of of whether or not they end up together or not. They're both seemingly very good people. They share a lot of love and uh, share their appetite on their social medias. Uh, I tell you what, follow me on my social media if you want to check out what I've got going on. Stand-up shows all week in New York City at D. Neal's uh, for show updates where I'll be. Tuesday night, New York Comedy Club. A couple tickets left. Linktree.com slash Dave Neal and link in the comment section if you want to check that out. Also, I'll be on Patreon right after this. Patreon.com slash Dave Neal and every afternoon, Bachelor Rush Hour, the hit podcast. Podcast. On the next video, right after this one, the next one I'm going right into, we have Sean Booth and what he has to say. Here's a quick preview for you. ABC's The Bachelorette, little reality show. We went on a date to the Guinness factory. They play games with you on the show so bad. They'll mess with your head so bad. I finally get my time with her and they give us like not even 10 minutes. If they see somebody who's got a good connection, they're like, we're going to do whatever we can to try and build up the other relationship. Okay, so that's Sean Booth. I'm going to have the full clip for you in the next video. Make sure to subscribe for that. He's got his new podcast, In the Booth Podcast. Of course, speaking here about Caitlin Bristow, his ex. And um, you know, now that he's in the podcasting game, we might find that he's more open to sharing uh, his side of how things went down and this and that, which is totally fine. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion and platform. What is it? The suck? What, which amendment is that? Everyone's entitled to their own YouTube channel. All right. But anyway, before we get into the clip about Rachel, Kirkconnell, I just released a 22-minute, so fairly long video about the Bachelor support of the Pride Month and how the haters are now unfollowing. I initially got, I think, one unfollow. I got, oh, I'm down to, I lost four subscribers for this video here. Uh, and again, it's one of those things. It's like, listen, you can't get out of my channel fast enough if you uh, if you uh, disagree with the simple uh, idea that, um, you know, we should support uh, and love those that uh, maybe think and act differently than us. Uh, but one of the comments really struck me. I'm fine with people being gay, straight, bi, whatever. Live your life. But why do we all have to be forced to celebrate it. No one is persecuted for their sexuality in the Western world, which, by the way, is ridiculously not true. I'd like to see us stop with the divisiveness and focus on things that still need advocacy, poverty, education, health care. It's like, okay, that's all fine, but um, I don't... So my response to that was, let's see, I said, look at it like this. Uh, there is now cake at the dinner party. You may choose to eat the cake or not, but imagine going to a party and complaining that there is cake. Just don't eat it. Don't attend a pride parade if you don't want to support it. Someone said, we have not gone mad. Why would any celebrity want to be political? If you want to be gay, do it in private. Stop pushing it on mainstream society like it's a normal thing. It's not. Having an entire month dedicated to this ridiculous cause is disgusting. And I said, oof, yuck. So those comments exist, and every once in a while, like a good loofah in the shower, we have to scrub off the dead weight. We don't want those types of viewpoints. But at the same time, in my video, I'm very careful to speak to people that might not understand why pride is a good thing. Um, it doesn't have to be a culture war. You're just being you know, used as a pawn in a bigger game here. Uh, but that's a different video. You can go check that out and we'll get into this one. Fans ask, is it over? Three days ago, our Matt, our Bachelor, Matt James and Rachel Kirkconnell done. Fans start to wonder because, you know, Bachelor Data had posted some statistics that showed, well, they haven't liked each other's fo photos and Rachel hasn't been in Matt James's TikTok grid and all of those things might be true and maybe they are, you know, taking a break and who, who knows, uh, Rachel Kirk Connell is on a family trip. Matt James is not there. So she posted this carousel, as the kids call it, of content here. Uh, just a selfie there and then a photo of her lying down on some beautiful beach there. Beautiful scenery. A photo with her in a bikini and a shawl, a lime green shawl. And then there she is, some toe photos. 
and um, I don't know, maybe showing off whatever tag, maybe tagging the bikini. Who knows? So she's doing the influencer thing. All credit there. And then and then Matt James commented, yes. And people, of course, left comments saying, oh my gosh, you know, it's a big deal. He got 515 likes. Uh, and then people asked, are you guys broken up or not? Which again, I remind all of you guys, we can only discuss these topics if we make sure that we don't bring it into their DMs. As a fan of the show, you, of course you can speculate, are they still together or are they not? And if they are going to provide us with information information that's on their social medias we'll talk about it and this and that but anything further than that just if you ever decide to send a message inquiring i get messages all the time i did caitlin bristow's podcast do you know how many people message me saying are jason and caitlin still together tell us what you saw what that's insane that's just insane so if it's out here in the open we talk about it if it's private we don't maybe they are together maybe they're not so someone left the comment. Let's see if we can find it here. Um, that said, um, beautiful girl with sadness in her eyes. <laughs> that was the comment. Beautiful girl with sadness in her eyes. And she said, I'm very happy, actually. And she responded to a lot of people, of course, saying very nice things. And she's sharing love. It is the Brooklyn way. And someone commented this. They saw Matt James. They said, I met Matt James tonight in D.C. Uh, I, met I met Matt James tonight at dinner in D.C. My friend and I were at an Italian restaurant. He recently reviewed on TikTok and saw him sitting at the bar. We chatted with him for almost 10 minutes, and he was so friendly and engaging. We talked about restaurants in D.C., and he wrote down some of our recommendations. He did mention Rachel. He referenced their favorite spot in Brooklyn. At the end of our conversation, he gave us both side hugs and offered to take a picture, which was so nice because I would never ask. He's a really cool guy, charming but still down to earth, and is so much taller than I realized and so attractive. Now, the reason I'm sure showing you this is because there's always two ways to look at things you can look at things with love unity respect hope and then you can look at things critically like someone like um a detective would would look at things as you know always looking for the crime always looking for that confirmation bias that something's wrong and who knows maybe they aren't together right but this is one way to look at it now when you look at what Dumois posted here it's a photo of matt james just a literal side profile photo of him smiling and it said matt james out at a bar in dc last night seemed very single eyes and that was it so what about Matt James sitting there at the bar made him seem very single? Now, if this person who sent in this anonymous tip here had any information, he had his hand on somebody, he was gyrating, whatever. Uh, they probably would have said that, right? But all they said is he seemed very single. So it really must be tough to be out there living in the light like this. Like imagine, I mean, imagine if I had a stand-up show and then I take photos with audience members after or whatever and people comment, oh, trouble, mu trouble must be brewing for their, you know, it's like, come on. Good grief, folks. So anyway, that's just, that's where the story is. Are they together or not? Well, physically, no. She's on vacation with her family. Maybe they've got a grand trip planned. I'm not really sure. I think it's okay to talk about, like I said, let's just make sure we're not DMing them. Well, they, you know, because I, I tell you what, I'm just done. Me personally, it's it's amazing. I mean, I can't imagine what they get, but me personally, the amount of DMs they get from people that don't even say hi. They don't go, hi, Dave. They go, Artesia and Zach. It's like, come on. It's the, the social media has literally fried our brains. It has fried our brains and almost changed the way we communicate. And it's kind of scary. Like, can we go back? Can we go back from this world where we're, where we feel so entitled to message people? I used <laughs> this uh, analogy the other day, which my wife said was the dumbest analogy ever. But it, it deals with the entitlement that fans have. And the analogy was this. A lot of people are eating the cheeseburger thinking they cooked it. <laughs> and what I meant by that was, and I, maybe I messed it up, but the idea that like people, and, and I think at the time I was talking about Taylor Swift a fan base who can be very entitled, but every fan base can be. There's a group of people that can be so entitled because they think they've made the person that is now famous, like say Rachel and Matt or whoever. And that group can say, we made you who we are. We have, and they, and they kind of feel like they have control. And that's, and that's really what it comes down to, to who cooked the cheeseburger and who ate the cheeseburger. It's like, if you're an audience of the bachelor, you're a consumer, you get to consume what they did. 
yeah, they wouldn't be influencers if it wasn't for you and the 90, 900 other thousand people that follow them. But you have to remember, they are where they are because they're entertaining and they're providing you a value. They're providing you entertainment. If you no longer feel that value, you'll leave. If people feel like my content's not valuable because I talked about why I think pride is a good thing to have, something we've had for 43 years now um, since the Stonewall riots. Oh, people in the Western world aren't persecuted. No, they were literally attacked by police okay so yes yes there is a problem yes squeaky wheel does get the grease yes there is a month dedicated to the celebration of non-heterosexual relations and that's okay and it's okay for rachel to clap back and it's okay for you to question where they are and you know i just think even though things sometimes can be okay that you know social media would 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 be a better place if we all spoke to people as if we would to them in real life. Because we know if we saw Rachel in real life, maybe unless someone's really wasted, they're not going to be like, oh, are you in master? No, you'd be polite and say, oh my gosh, I love that lip gloss color. Where did you buy it or whatever? And she goes, oh my gosh, I'll tag it in a thing. That's how you have polite conversation. That's how it's done in real life. And yet social media just gives us the keys to these DMs that lead to negative energy. And I'm over it. Let me know what you guys think. I don't know. Maybe I'm just like the old man on the porch. Like get off my lawn here with this social media BS. But it's getting out of hand. Okay. Um, let me know what you guys think. I'll be live on Patreon right after this. And then Bachelor Rush Hour this afternoon. All right, folks. Uh, be kind out there.